Oh, hey there. Here, have a look at my catch me. Look, everyone just got it this week during the very paradox. It's got big damage, big wide shots, and oh, it's actually not this weapon. Right, sorry. Oh, 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 right. Have a little look at my spore laser. Holy moly, even bigger damage, even bit. Wait, seriously, it's not. What do you mean the Lex Prime is the same, but way better? Dude, it shoots single. Shuts the fuck. Steady on, guys. Do I censor this gameplay? I'm not even sure if I age restricted the video because the Lex Incarnate and Genesis is right up there as one of the best Incarnate and Genesis to grab right now. Turning itself from this little pew pew. <laughs> oh my god, so cute. He he he. Into this abolish the Oregon Empire. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to business. Timestamps are added beneath the video. Where do you get the Incarnate from? All Incarnate Genesis weapons are on a weekly rotation and you can select two out of five choices to farm for completing stages within the Deviri Paradox Circuit mission as the game mode on the left. Keep in mind that you will need to be on the Steel Path version. What evolution should you take? Well, Lex is a monster, so let's make that monster per Evolution 1. As like with all of the weapon evolutions, this is given to you and it's basically the way that you will evolve your weapon during gameplay. For this weapon, you'll need to go and land headshots to build up your meter to evolve it later by alt firing. Evolution 2. Increase damage by 20 and when your shields break, you gain an extra 80 damage increase for 8 seconds. No, this doesn't work on Nidus or Inneros, at least from what I tested. Or increase damage by 20, but with a Warframe channeled ability active, you gain 60% ammo efficiency. Now, since the ammo efficiency doesn't actually affect the evolved state of this weapon, we're going with the first choice because nearly all Warframes in the game have innate shields tied to their frames for defense. So imagine it like a Berserker passive proc, lose shields, gain damage, Lovely. Evolution 3. On headshot, gain 20% less weapon recoil and gain 20% more accuracy for 4 seconds and this stacks 4 times. Increase the Lex magazine capacity by 10 or reloading an empty magazine increases your reload speed by 100%. So from a quick use of the weapon, although it may kick with a recoil per shot, it has such low fire rate that you pretty much recover well before your next shot. So I wouldn't really take the first option, although it's a good one if you guys do need it. The second option doesn't affect the evolved state of Lex, so I personally passed on this, which left me with the last option to basically double my reload speed whilst empty. So this felt nice to take because ultimately you will be rebuilding the evolved version quite often. And if you miss headshots and don't build its passive to trigger it, you can just basically get like this free double as fast reload utility to keep carrying on. Evolution 4. On equipping your weapon, you gain a 100% increase to headshot damage for 4 seconds, increase your status chance by a flat 30%, or increase critical chance by 90% and your critical damage by about 40%. Well, I won't lie to you guys, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining these upgrades here because honestly, seeing the choice for critical increase on a weapon that basically already hits like a truck in the first place, literally scream, pick me, pick me, uh, as its choice. So guess what, guys? But we picked it, and you know what? It was worth it. What does the evolve shot look like? Wide, far, destruction. This thing feels like a pre-nerfed catch moon. I mean, if you're going to evolve a weapon, then this feels done right. Although it comes with just 20 rounds loaded when you transform the gun, it feels absolutely worth it when you finally get to that stage, unleashing devastating damage that would even make Spotlight to cry. So what does a build look like then? Okay, so there's two builds that I've created for this, but for now, let's cover the scaling one first. This is like a pocket primary, in other words. Oh, and a quick mention that there's lots of room to play around with both builds. I just couldn't be bothered to keep forming a weapon that was already overpowered and not min-maxed fully. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please go and leave a like. Kick it off with damage. I put this in my arcane for now, but on screen are some other mods that you can use to give yourself a damage increase right here. Multi-shot because extra damage or damaged instances are always a great thing. And do not forget that lethal torrent does actually go and help your fire rate as well, which will genuinely help your build. My goodness, it's miserable without it. Criticals, where would we be without them? You want bigger numbers and bigger one shots, then criticals are your best friends. And Lex loves criticals. Hemorrhage. 
Now, this is basically a hunter munitions build in disguise. The Evolve version of this Incarnan weapon innately has impact damage. And since it has such a low rate of fire, it's double as effective as a mod. So hemorrhage comfortably fits in here. And this is the main thing to scale for this build. Add in slash procs whenever you're going to hit those impact hits. Gross. Faction mods, because where would scaling proc and builds be without them? Remember, you do need to go and change faction mods depending on the faction that you go ahead and face. It's better just to default to Corrupted or Grenier, as you will mostly face them throughout your Warframe experience. And finally, that leaves elemental mods to finish off this build. Now, do remember you have a low rate of fire, so you're not stacking debuffs like Viral. Instead, go for high flat element mods, like the 90% ones you're provided, or ones like Primed Heated Chamber, which ultimately and effectively multiply your damage output with an extra 165% or 90%, whichever ones you are currently using. As for the Exciter slot, I went with projectile speed since, well, it's basically a projectile shot when evolved. So I wanted to close that gap and have an easier time hitting targets. This build gives Lex more breathing rooms when enemies start to scale by adapting to the slash meta that we're currently in. It already hit hard even in this build, but to make enemies bleed after the hit, well, that's just something special. All right, what about the other build that you said, Clark? All right, so for this one, it's more for general gameplay and not for scaling content, really. This will absolutely destroy steel path missions with the finest of grace. Looking at one straight destructive shot and just don't look back at the mangled corpses you left behind. Plenty of damage, plenty of multi-shot, corrosive or radiation for bonus damage, flat mods across the boards and criticals. Now, whether you wanna go and take build one or build two, you are going to mow down enemies with absolute brute force with this new Lex Incarn in Genesis. We are getting spoiled for weapons during this Daviri Paradox update, and I can say wholeheartedly that I'm loving every moment using these. Guys, 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 I do have a small problem though. You see, I love my Spore Laser, and Lex may slowly be looking to replace it, so if it does, can I get a preemptive F in the chat, followed by your favorite memory of me using my spore laser. Like the time when we first stepped into Steel Path together, nervous about what could unfold, but both of us having sparkles in our eyes. It almost seemed like yesterday. <sighs> oh well, 